I'm still getting some pretty funny looks. Well, I'm very proud of you, the way you've stood your ground tonight. Yeah? Sure. If anyone here can call themselves a lady, you can. <laughs> well, if anyone can call themselves a gentleman tonight, you can. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm proud of you. <laughs> What she'd do if she knew. You what? Who her miserable father was. You mean his father, Bobby? His brutal honesty is so important to the little car. Let's see how she takes being on the receiving end. Bobby, you can't do it. Oh, yes, I can. But it wasn't Bobby who leaked the story. You're not being fair. It's not her fault. Fair? An eye for an eye. That girl has made me suffer, and I'm going to see that she suffers in return. What about Uncle Donald? You can't hurt him like this. Watch me. He's as much to blame as she is. But she just said you never even told him. You never even knew. You can't do this. Sit down and look after Nigel, will you? Tell me more, I please. Um, excuse me, everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, could I have your attention, please? Um, everybody? What's she up to? Something awful. You've got to stop her. I suppose she knows thank what she's you. doing. I think she does. I think she's going mad. Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you all very much for coming tonight and to um, helping me celebrate the reopening of one of the town's finest old properties. Oh, and my homecoming, I could call it. You know, to turn you back into one's past is a very interesting one. It helps one recall one's humble origins and how one overcame them. Well, not that this the house has any particular up. memories for no, me. I mean, the house that does that is already occupied by my sister. Keeper of all local folk history. Or gossip, as I usually call it. You know, becoming reacquainted with one's family after so many years is a very... Well, it's a very reassuring thing to know that absolutely nothing has changed. How comforting to know that my dear brother Alfred hasn't altered one drop since he turned 16. Well, the only discernible difference being um, his lovely and absent wife who could so easily be confused with his lovely, if absent, first wife. Now, looking around and seeing all these old faces, it's very interesting to know just how much one can recall. Oh, a lot of it best forgotten, no doubt. But then this is a night for recollection. So, well, let's just remember, shall we? What a pillar of the community, Donald. Oh, if only they knew. You know, for as long as I can remember, you have personified respectability upheld the moral fiber of the town, one could say. Tell me, tell me Such an onerous know. responsibility, and one frogs to money one can't afford to make a single slip. Oh, now, I am living proof of that. And you know, it's quite extraordinary, the penalty one has to pay for a single, small mistake. And such an unworthy mistake. But, of course, in my day, one was compelled to produce one's mistake. But, of course, these days, there's a very civilized solution to getting rid of the problem. What a pity I didn't discover it until it was too late. Bobby. What a salutary midlife surprise you were. Oh, not only for me, of course. It does take two. You did, and you still do have a father. Help! Help! so much for trying to bring civilization into this sack water. Oh, is that what you thought you were doing? Oh, don't you talk to me! Didn't sound very civilized from what I heard. You were the fool who insisted I like that idiot. And just as well in the circumstances. He saved you from committing a folly that even took my breath away. And I know your limits better than anyone. How dare you? Somebody has to. You know, one day you will go too far, Nigel. Sloppy reasoning, Your Worship. You're the last person here who should talk about going too far. I have had enough insults and insolence for one night. Thank you. Good. So where do you think you're going? To bed. How dare you walk away from me when I am talking to you? You're not talking, Moran. You're having a childish tantrum. Good night. Who the hell do you think you are? You know, if it weren't for me, you'd be in some sheltered workshop making Raffi a mess. I am surrounded by fools and weaklings. I mean, can you believe that? No, I can't. Especially after everything that they've put me through. What about what you put everyone else through tonight? I beg your pardon. I don't believe what you just said to Nigel. I don't believe what you said to Dad and Auntie Celia and Uncle Donald. And I especially, especially don't believe what you said to Bobby. It made me feel sick. <laughs> After everything they've put you through, 
They haven't put me through anything. I've done everything to me. You know I don't understand you. I thought you were the one member of the family that had any backbone. Backbone? Is that what you call all the things I've done and what you're doing now? <laughs> oh, they've really got through to you, haven't they? You're beginning to sound just like your father and Celia. I hope so. Because watching you rip everyone to shreds tonight was like looking in the mirror. And I don't ever want to go back there. Ruth? The roof? she was going to go that far. She gave me a word. Heavens above, Donald. You heard her. She didn't spare the rest of us. Look, I know she's feeling bitter at the moment, bitter? but... She's as sour as last week's milk. She's mad if you ask me. Look, I don't give a hang about Morag Bellion. All I care about is Bobby. Can we stick to that, please? Yeah. The same to me, Mr. Fisher. It's been your back everyone's covered. Pity Bobby didn't write the same intention. Oh, I don't think that's quite true. Yes, it is. I think he just about said it all, Donald. Do you think I haven't carried it around with me every day since I've known... I must have rehearsed it a hundred different ways to find the way that, that would hurt least. Well, hurt who? Her or you? Have you thought this through? Because I have. And if someone, anyone, can show me an alternative to silence as the best way of protecting her, then I will be happy to hear it. Now, that's not an option anymore. Then for God's sake, tell me what is. Is that what you even try and understand? No, not anymore. You are the daughter that I've always wanted. But I'm not. Bobby is. I don't want her. She is everything I despise. Well, that's not her fault. That's yours. I can't help it. It's the way I feel. You. You. It's all you ever think about. Ruth. Ruth. You leave her alone. Or forget me because I won't be here. Well, perhaps it ought to come from you, Alfred. Oh, don't be so silly, Celia. Look, Bobby can take anything as long as it's given to her straight. Right. You might around that she's not going to want to know you. Well, that's the last thing I want to happen. Perhaps he should be there, Frank. No, he's going to do it by himself. We've got visitors. What the hell are you doing here? Dad, back off. She's got something she wants to say. I think she said quite enough. Celia, don't start. Please, come in. Thank you. It always does concern you, too. Yes, well, um... I think I owe you all an apology. <laughs> That'll be the understatement of the century. Dad, shut up. I behaved inexcusably this evening, and I'm sorry. That's it. I'm sorry. No, Celia, that's not it. Donald, I know I gave you my assurance once before, so I fully understand if you choose to be a bit cynical about what I'm going to say. But regardless of anything, Bobby will never learn the identity of her father through me. Until the next time she changes her mind. See, you stay out of it for once. Don't be so gullible, Donald. This is just nothing but sham theatrics. Honey, Celia, shut up. Ruth. You have my word on that. Well, I, uh, I think this changes things somewhat. Well, for me, it doesn't. Me either. What about Bobby's right here? You're kidding, aren't you, Donald? Half the town knows you're a father by now. Well, can we cut the bull? Now, are you going to tell Bobby or not? Well, bother. I don't want to hear it. I'm sick to death of all your stinking lies. I hate you. I hate the lot of you. 